Hello, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. Today is my January TBR and I'm so excited. It is the brand new start of a brand new year and that brings brand new reads. So honestly, without further ado, let's just like get into them. First up is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong and this is going to be a book that I'm going to be reading with Chanel and she's going to be hosting a live show at the end of the month or early February dates TBD. But I'm so excited that Chanel offered me to participate in this live show with her and I was like, hell yeah, because this book seems so good. Everyone is talking about it. It just seems like it's right up my alley and I can't wait. So this is a book that takes place in 1920s Shanghai and it is a Romeo and Juliet retelling and the line is taken from these violent delights have violent ends. So I'm worried about how this book is going to end. Also, we all know how Romeo and Juliet ends. <laughs> so there is a blood feud between two rival gangs. At the heart of it all is 18 year old Juliet Kai, a former flapper who has turned to assume her role as the heir of the Scarlet Gang. Their only rivals in power are the White Flowers. And behind every move is their heir, Roma Montagov. Juliet's first love and first betrayal. But when gangsters on both sides start to show signs of mental instability and start clawing their own throats out, people start to whisper of a monster in the shadows. As the deaths stack up, Juliet and Roma must set the guns and bad feelings aside and work together to stop the mayhem before there is no city left for either of them to rule. I mean, this just sounds like everything, like 1920s, Shanghai, rival gangs, Romeo and Juliet retelling. Sign me up, I'm ready, I'm ready for the live show. I think it's gonna be so much fun to discuss this with people and just the reaction I've been seeing people have to this book has me so, so excited. Which brings me to my next point is that we will be continuing the Akotar Long, which is hosted by me and Maddie. I mean, we'll be having our live show for A Court of Frost and Starlight this coming month. The dates will be announced at some point soon. Um, I will leave a link to the other live shows down below. I've had so much fun. Oh, what are these that fell out? Oh, they're the tarot cards that I have back when I um, was, you know, subscribed to Fairloot for a short bit. This is the novella in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series, and it kind of takes place after A Court of Wings and Ruin, which is the culmination, the end of the trilogy. So it's a, it's a little bit of a fluff piece. Like, I have read this before, and um, I love this dress. I love this dress on Feyre. This cover style is iconic and I'm sad that they changed Anyways, so this is also the exclusive edition from I think it was Books A Million and just like look at this art. I think it's by Monoline, I want to say, and no, yes. And like I just love their art style, beautiful. So you know, I'm going to be reading this. It is pretty short. It's like, I don't know how much about 200 pages or so, which is very short for a Sarah J Mass book. I know it's a fluff book, but I feel like I'm just still gonna have fun with it, you know? So there's that. The next book that I want to read in January is going to be Keepers of the Lost Cities Exile. This is the second book in the Keepers of the Lost Cities series, and I might like just read all of these books because I am obsessed after reading the first book. Keepers of the Lost Cities follows Sophie, who is a 12-year-old girl who can read minds. No one knows that she has this ability and she feels very alone in the world until she meets Fitz, who is someone else that can also read minds, and it turns out that she is an elf, and so she must give up everything she's ever known and join Firefox Academy. And there's, you know, some, some greater evils at play here as Sophie kind of uncovers hidden memories that she was not aware that she had. And I'm so excited to see where this series is going to be taken. Like the first book was just amazing. Everything that I could ever ask for in a middle grade. And I might honestly read like a few of these. Like I already own the third and the fourth one, which are Everblaze and Never Seen. And maybe I'll read like, I think there's eight total. I don't know if the eighth one is the last one, but I am just like in love with this. So I want to read it. I really want to be reading books in January that give me wintry vibes. So these next few books are like books that are just, they just speak winter to me. 
and I feel like I need to take this opportunity this winter to read The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. When I went to the signing for this book, Erin Morgenstern said, this is the perfect book for winter, and that stuck with me. So then I didn't want to read it when it wasn't winter anymore, but now it's winter again. January is the perfect time to read this book. It just has winter vibes. And so The Starless Sea follows Zachary Ezra Rawlings, who is a college student, and he is searching for his door. Um, I'm just going to read the first paragraph of this summary because I feel like it can kind of give you the vibe better than I can, but it says, Far beneath the surface of the earth, upon the shores of the Starless Sea, there is a labyrinth collection of tunnels and rooms filled with stories. The entryways that lead to the sanctuary are often hidden, sometimes on forest floors, sometimes in private homes, sometimes in plain sight. But those who seek will find. Their doors have been waiting for them. And there's a bee, a key, and a sword emblazoned on a book that leads Zachary to two people who will change the course of his life. Mirabelle, a fierce pink-haired painter, and Dorian, a handsome barefoot man with shifting alliances. And they guide Zachary through the hidden worlds. And like, I mean, if you screaming so many people like love this book that read it this year and i it's just it's time like this is going to be the perfect 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 winter read i can just feel it in my bones the next book that is a winter read that i really want to make sure that i get to this january is the bear and the nightingale by Catherine arden i mean look at the cover it's a winter book i've had my eye on the series for so long and it's just time it's time for me to read them because ugh, they just just like the most atmospheric, perfect winter books. Vasilia lives on the edges of the Russian wilderness, where winter lasts most of the year and the snowdrifts are taller than the houses. She spends long winter nights huddled around the fire in her family's home where she listens to tales from the nursemaid, her favorite being that of Frost, the blue-eyed winter demon who appears in the frigid night to claim unwary souls. Wise Russians fear him and honor the spirits of the house in the yard and the forest to protect their homes from this evil. After Vasilia's mother dies, her father brings home a brand new city-bred wife who does not honor these timeless traditions. Vasilia is frightened, sensing that more hinges on these rituals than anyone has ever known. Crops begin to fail, evil creatures of the forest creep nearer, and misfortune stalks the village. Meanwhile, her stepmother tries to groom Vasilia into a marriage and being the perfect wife. As the danger circles, Vasilia must defy even the people she loves and call upon dangerous gifts that she has long concealed in order to protect her family from a threat that seems to have stepped from her nurse's most frightening tales. I mean, Russia in the winter, I have to read this book this month, you know? And I feel like I might even, like, read the next two books, so I want to leave some space in my TBR for that, you know? Leave some space for it. And with that, that's like a pretty stack. TBR, I would say I don't think I would get to more books than this, but I do want to include a manga and that is going to be The Promised Neverland. And this is a manga that it's actually the backstory for one of my favorite K-pop, my new one of my new favorite K-pop groups, like their music video storyline is apparently based on this manga, which is initially what got me interested in it. And it's like I think follows like a bunch of children in some sort of like magical home. I don't know much more about the plot and I heard it's best to go into the plot that way but this is the cover. This is what it's about and I really want to start this manga series. If I'm really into it I might read like a bunch of them so I can finally understand what's going on in you know the music videos of this group so I have some context and I also heard that there is an anime that I would love to watch and it's apparently gonna rip my heart out so like you know Set me up. So that is it for my very wintry January TBR. I'm here for all like the cold weather, winter vibes, you know? Like this is like this is just gonna be me on my couch all January reading all my wintry books and this is just like my natural state of being in the winter. I mean like all year probably, but also just like this one has snowflakes, so this is like for winter. So yes. And with that said, that's all I am going to be putting on my TBR this month because I don't want to overwhelm myself, but I feel good about it right out the gate. Let me know down below what you are reading this January and have some fun reading some books and I'll catch you guys in the next one.